All right, I think we got them this time, 60 degrees and 55 meters per second. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. Oh, sorry, guys. I was just playing one of my old favorite games. You know, back before there was Angry Birds, there was Angry Gorillas throwing exploding bananas at each other. Anyway, today we're going to talk about graphs of projectile motion, and we're going to recreate that scene that uh, you just saw, but we're going to play gorillas on our calculator. To do that, let's uh, start by exploring a particular problem. Here's the city skyline, and you can see the uh, heights of the buildings and the locations of two gorillas. And uh, the gorilla on the left here decides to throw a banana at a specific angle and velocity, and we want to see where does that uh, banana go. So to start off with, we should take the speed and angle that were given to us and break that into the initial velocity components. So we've got a velocity of 50 at an angle of 55. And we've seen enough times now that uh, the vertical velocity is the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. And the horizontal velocity is the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. So what we really need to figure out this is some position formulas. So the, remember, the position formula is an initial position plus an initial velocity times time plus 1 half times an acceleration times time squared. And uh, let's look at the initial position of this gorilla. It's located here. Its initial horizontal position is 10. So we can write that in, 10 plus, and we just learned a second ago, horizontal velocity is 50 cosine 55. 50 times the cosine of 55 degrees times time. And horizontally, for projectiles, there's no acceleration, unless you're talking about air friction or if there's some sort of wind involved. Uh, we'll keep it simple and say that there's nothing. So this is it for the horizontal position formula. Vertically, this gorilla starts up 120 meters. And its initial velocity is 50 times the sine of 55 times time. And it will have vertical acceleration. That will be because of gravity. Let's assume it to be here on Earth. And uh, so we'll use half of negative 9.8 times t squared. If you don't mind, I'd like to type that into my calculator a second and make a graph of this. We'll turn it on and go to y equals. Remember, I'm in parametric mode. The horizontal initial position was 10 plus 50 times the cosine of 55 degrees times time. And vertically, we've got 120 plus 50 times the sine of 55 degrees times time plus the half of negative 9.8 times squared. Now, before I press graph, we should look at the window settings a little bit. Let's see if we can reproduce this picture as accurately as possible on our calculator. So let me draw a quick little box around it. This is what I would like the calculator to display. Uh, if we look horizontally, um, the initial position of this grill is 10 meters. Uh, it looks like these buildings are about 20 meters apart. And so there's eight buildings. That would lead us to go from 0 to 160 on the x-axis. By 20s makes sense. Each building is 20 wide. So vertically, uh, this building is at a height of 120. The tallest building is at a height of 240. If we were to go up even further, I would suggest we probably go up to 300. So let's say from 0 to 300. And let's keep it consistent. We'll also go by 20s along the y-axis. Let me type these into my calculator quickly. Window. Oh, look, they're already there. 0, 160 by 20s. 0 to 300 by 20s. 
And the time setting, I'm going to say, let's go from 0 to 12 seconds. The distances here are pretty big, so these bananas are going to be traveling for a relatively long amount of time. I don't think three or four seconds that we're because they'll be calculating for so long, uh, let's have a time step a little bit bigger than 0.1 so we don't have to wait so bad. How about 0.25? At this point, if we hit graph, we can see the shot. And if I try to transfer that particular picture onto the graph down here, it looks as though the graph is going to go through this building and certainly miss the gorilla. Maybe something like this. Now, I think it'd be really cool if we could actually put those buildings onto our calculator. And actually, it's not so hard. Those buildings look very much like a bar graph. And our calculators can create bar graphs. Let's try that. To do that, there's really two options. We could go just to the drawing menu and find rectangle and draw them in. A more flexible option is to go to the statistics menu and edit and type in the x values of the buildings and the y values of the buildings. And then we can create this bar graph. Let me show you how to do that. If we go to stat and edit, in L1, I should type in the x coordinates of each of the buildings. And specifically, you need to type in the centers of each of the buildings. The first building is centered around 10 meters horizontally. And each of the buildings is 20 meters wide. So the next one would be 30 and 50 and 70, 90, 110, 130, 150. And that would be eight buildings. For list two, we need to type in the y values of each of the buildings. The first building is uh, 120 meters tall. That's easily labeled. The second building is not quite as easily labeled, but it looks about the same height as that sixth building. So let's call it 160. The next building is about a little less than that, maybe 150. The tallest building, 240. After that is 200 and 160. And the building that the gorilla is on is only 60 meters tall. That final building looks like it's somewhere between 160 and 200. Let's call it 180. To actually create the bar graph, we need to go to stat plot. So that will be second y equals. And uh, we'll turn the first plot on. So hit Enter, and we'll make some adjustments. Turn the plot on and go down and instead of a scatter plot let's make the bar graph here you've got two different lists you should have l1 in for your x list and you should have l2 in for frequency i had done this ahead of time so if you have something different you should type second and then press two and that will put list two in there for you once you've done this, now you can hit graph, and you'll see the city skyline show up and the path of the banana. And it appears that that throw is not even going to make it over the first building. Now that we've got everything typed in, here's where the real fun can begin. We can go back to y equals, and we can adjust the initial velocity and the angle at which the banana was thrown. And let's see if we can hit that second gorilla. Looks like the first thing I saw is that we need to throw higher in order to get over that first building. So that means our angle should change. Instead of 55 degrees, let's change it to 75 degrees. You also need to change it in the y equals equation. Change this to 75 and hit graph and see if that's any better. It's pretty good, although it looks like we need to throw it a little bit higher yet and probably with a little bit more velocity. Now, I encourage you to play around with this, but I don't have the patience to just guess and check a whole bunch of different numbers. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to calculate specifically what velocity is required to make this happen. Specifically, I'm going to calculate the exact angle and velocity required to hit the gorilla with a shot that's exactly 12 seconds long. There are lots of different angle and velocity combinations that could work, and each one has a different amount of time. 
I found from experience that it's fastest to just pick an arbitrary amount of time and calculate the velocities required to make it happen, and then adjust if need be. So we'll start with 12 and see what happens. The key equation involved in this is going to be the position equations, as we've used before. We'll need to do this twice, using a horizontal position formula and a vertical position formula. The position formula is SF equals S0 plus V0 T plus 1 half of AT squared. And let's plug in all the horizontal numbers we know. The only thing we don't know is the velocity required. The final position, if we take a look back, we can see here the final position and the initial position of the gorillas. Horizontally, the final position is 130 meters, and initially it's 10. So 130 is equal to 10 plus the initial velocity times the time. And here we arbitrarily chose 12. If you'd like to use a different time, you can feel free to plug in a different number instead and solve for that particular type of throw. And since the acceleration horizontally is zero, we can neglect this term and uh, leave it off. Solving for v naught is easy enough. Subtract 10 from both sides and divide both sides by 12. And we get an initial velocity horizontally, or v naught x, is equal to 10 meters per second. We'll repeat the steps for vertical. We'll use the exact same formula. But this time, we're only going to plug in vertical numbers. Let's glance back and see what the initial and final positions vertically were. The initial position vertically was 120, and the final position is 60. So 60 is equal to 120 plus the v naught, which we don't know. That's our variable times 12 plus 1 half of negative 9.8 times 12 squared. Now, this is just a number. Don't let that scare you. Let's calculate it a second. That's just half times negative 9.8 times 12 times 12, or negative 705.6. We still have 60 and 120 and v naught times 12 minus 705.6. So to get v naught and stuff by itself, we should subtract 120 from both sides and add 705.6 to both sides. That's 60 minus 120 plus 705.6, or 645.6. And that's equal to 12 v naught. Divide both sides by 12. And v naught is 645.6 over 12, or 53.8 meters per second. To answer the question of does this combination clear the buildings, we should plug it into the calculator and just see. We'll go back to y equals. And instead of 50 cosine 75, we'll type in 10. That's the uh, initial horizontal. That's the initial horizontal velocity. And instead of 50 times the sine of 75, we'll type in 53.8, and that's times time plus half of 9.8 times time squared. And we'll hit graph. Notice that uh, in the 12 seconds that we have graphed, it is exactly the position that we need to land right at the feet of the gorilla. Unfortunately, it looks like it gets cut off by the building here and would not actually work. We would have to throw a little bit higher. Unfortunately, I'm out of time, so I can't recalculate this. I'm going to leave it as a challenge for you to calculate an angle and velocity combination that will work. If you choose to calculate it, You'll probably have to choose a higher amount of time than 12 seconds, because 12 seconds isn't quite high enough to clear that final building.